Welcome to the next episode of vSphere Breakroom Chats. I'm Shobhit Bhutani, Product Marketing Manager here at VMware, responsible for messaging and positioning of vSphere, AIML, and GPUs. In this series, we bring VMware and partner experts to discuss VMware's vSphere and cloud products. These fabulous experts also share their backgrounds, industry trends, and general tips for IT, technical experts, and our customers. I'm very excited to work talk today to Justin Murray, technical marketing architect at VMware in today's episode. Justin is a staff technical marketing architect here at VMware and focuses on technical infrastructure conditions, uh, considerations for designing and optimizing and enable deployments for partners and customers. Uh, today, we're gonna discuss what's new for GPU and AIML in update one release of v VMware vSphere 8, which came out just this morning. So this is a pretty cool and really you know, interesting topic. Uh, welcome, Justin. Thank you very much. Good to be here, Shobhan. Awesome, awesome. Justin and I worked together for almost two years now, so really excited about this because it's always a pleasure working with you, Justin. Likewise. Um, thank you. So uh, let's, uh, you know, exciting, exciting topic today, really exciting. Like, it has been a while since we brought you on this series, right? I think about six months or so. I think it would be a great idea to kind of for the audience, right? Just kind of mention what your background is, what you're doing at VMware, and most importantly, uh, what's your favorite beverage? Mine is coffee and I go chug chug every day, three times a day at least. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I've been at uh, VMware now coming up to 16 years, believe it or not, and the last five or so have been all on NVIDIA, GPUs, and AI ML. And I feel like I'm having the time of my life here. This is the best, best part of my career. I start the morning every morning with a non-fat two-shot latte, and that gets me going, and maybe a second one an hour later, and that gets me fired up to work on this. But uh, it's a very exciting field and uh, very interested to talk about it. Most of my time is, is uh, working with NVIDIA on customer projects and on uh, developing future work with them to make life easier for the data scientists, essentially, on VMware. Awesome, awesome. Now, no conversation these days can be done about AML without talking talking about everybody's favorite topic, Chat GPT, right? Right. Now, Chat GPT three, Chat GPT four that just got released a couple of days back, right, is making things really, really exciting for us people working on the AML field. Um, it's become a very interesting topic, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure your conversations with customers, there's been an increase in demand about this. Um, in AI ML in general, I mean, right? How yeah. has the conversations changed? Like, are you also noticing those demand, increase in demand and interest from customers? Yes, there's definitely um, a popularization of the AI ML technology now. Everybody knows about it, even outside our industry. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's using ChatGPT to write essays and you know compose new works. It's very interesting. And the fact that it's driven by a machine learning model, GPT was GPT-3, now GPT-4, is largely hidden from people. But uh, the technical world knows that the machine learning is backing that up. And all of our customers are looking at that and saying, how could I do something like that that's specific to enhance my business? And ChatGPT, it uses a huge model. Uh, very, very few companies are going to do anything like that. It's 10,000 GPUs to support it or higher. Um, and so it's subsets of that, very much smaller reduced subsets, that would be used in applications today. But the change in attitude, as you asked, Shobit, is people are now thinking about larger and larger systems, larger and larger models than they have been in the past. People have been trying to optimize their GPUs with small subsets of them. But now they're, they're purchasing four GPU or eight GPU servers to serve models. So that's the big change is a move upwards, I think, in interest and more serious interest in AI ML for applications. Got it, got it. Very interesting. Very, very interesting topic. Like chat GPT is the coolest thing ever in my opinion. So, <laughs> yep, agreed. Yep. Um, <clears throat> now, vSphere, we entered the AI ML space, like, you know, basically with you kind of leading the charge, right? About four or five years or so, give or take, 
two years back or so, we came out with you know our own capabilities, um, la, you know, in partnership with NVIDIA as part of the VMware plus NVIDIA AI ready enterprise platform, right? Which right. kind of enables those capabilities and gives a ready to deploy stack for customers, right? In which they can start deploying AIML like right away. That's right. Um, <clears throat> We continue to expand these capabilities very aggressively, right? Because we're we're keeping up with the market and we're at the forefront of this, right? From an AI ML perspective for our customers. Now, as part of vSphere 8, you know, update one release that just came out this morning, I know we've expanded the capabilities from an AI ML and GPU capabilities. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about what those capabilities are and what use cases and benefits are they enabling for customers? Absolutely, yes. The, the two prominent things that I'd like to emphasize are supercharging performance, and that's largely adding more GPU power. And secondly, operational efficiency through sharing the GPU in new ways, being giving you more flexible ways to do that. Now, these are infrastructure benefits, and they are significant moves on behalf of VMware and NVIDIA together. NVIDIA at the same time is adding new things into the higher level of the stack, into the data science layer. So the, the stack is expanding all the time. But if we delve into that supercharging performance theme there, what we see is eight GPUs on the server now being capable of talking to each other at high speed over NVLink and NVSwitch, all being presented to one VM if you wanted to, or being carved up into the smaller subsets and those presented to the to one VM. And those are called device groups. And they're an easy way for you to exploit multiple GPUs to, to do your AI ML work. That's very powerful because that takes us into the building block for very large systems world where you would string multiples of these, uh, these uh, eight GPU boxes together and have a very large system. We're taking steps in, in that direction and NVIDIA is guiding us there with the HGX board, for example. The second theme is operational efficiency, and that's about using the GPU in a more efficient way. And the way in which we do that now is with something we call heterogeneous profiles. Uh, before this came along, you had to have everything of the same nature on the one GPU. Everything was graphics, or everything was compute, or everything was VDI. Now you can mix all those workloads onto the same uh, A40 or L40 GPU that's capable of doing both and drive the GPU harder, efficient, effectively get more efficiency out of it. So supercharged performance with high-end numbers of GPUs, operational efficiency with sharing different profiles onto the GPU at once. That's that's really the big contribution of 8.0U1. Awesome, and then if I may just add to the NV switch capability that you just talked about, right? It's 900 Mbps, GBPS speed, between GPU to GPU versus that's right. you know PCIe that switch speed is way less like I think what 10x less or 8x one tenth one tenth yeah that's the that, that's the Hopper H100 operating bidirectionally 450 <laughs> gigabit gigabytes per second over NVLink and the switch it's incredible speed for linking GPUs together to make them look like one yeah awesome awesome fantastic so now the coolest part of today right is the demos. I think yep. you got a couple of demos in mind you want to share with us. Yes, I do. And I'm going to bring those into the screen now and share the screen. And hopefully you can see that now. So what you're seeing here is eight GPUs on a server being used in VMs. So there's a large number of virtual machines on the left-hand side here. And I'm just going to play this and let it run and speak through it. Uh, so what we're doing here is looking at a device group attached to a virtual machine, which represents eight virtual GPUs at once, all on one VM. Incredible power there. And when we delve into the VM itself, use NVIDIA SMI, we see all those GPUs as if they were um, virtual GPUs here, but we see them in full and we can tell that they're NV linked or NV switched together when we do NVIDIA SMI topo topology minus M NV hash there says these are NV linked together. They're actually NV switch with 12 lanes between them. So that's one example. Uh, that's the most powerful thing you could do here. We showed you the impressive thing first. All of those physical GPUs there are represented as virtual GPUs to that VM. So they could 
in theory be placed onto the right host by VMware itself. What you're looking at here is a, a subset with just two of those NV switch GPUs. That's one example. Uh, you can carve these up into fabric manager partitions under the covers and dedicate two or four, as you see here, four virtual GPUs assigned to one VM that all have NV link NV switch between them. And lastly, just to recap on what we saw earlier, there's the eight GPU one, uh, eight virtual GPUs as one device group presented to a VM. This is what the system administrator would, would use to do this in VMware. Lastly, just to complete the picture, if you decided to just use one virtual GPU on your VM, you can do that too. Um, that's, that's somewhat outside of the device group subject. So when we look at the ESXi host now, uh, and we look at the hardware underlying all that uh, on the ESXi host, we can see there were eight SXM A100 GPUs here, high, highly powered GPUs. Um, and when we look at the topology of those at the hardware level, we can see the same topology we saw inside the virtual machine, which is NV switch, NV link is there between all eight GPUs. A very big setup here that, that you could use all at once in your VM or in separate VMs. And when we double check as to what the interconnections are between them, we can see at the bottom there, you have six NV switches tying those eight GPUs together, which is the standard HGX board that you would get uh, today. So that's the first, the first part of it. Now let's look at, that's the supercharged performance with multiple GPUs. Let's look at another example from NVIDIA, from uh, vSphere 8 update one, which is heterogeneous profiles. When you as a, a system administrator are taking the very important step of allocating power from your GPU, you choose a vGPU profile. And here's the set of profiles you would be confronted with uh, from an A40. There's a big choice here, and you can choose A type profiles for application, Q type profiles, quadro, for graphics or other types of profiles, C-type profiles. Uh, before, they all had to be the same type. They all had to be graphics or compute. And you can see there's a wide variety of them here. What we're going to do now is see a VM with a Q-type profile on host 67 here, and then a C-type profile also on host 67. So that's two different profiles mixed onto the same GPU on the same host. So that's heterogeneous profiles for operational efficiency uh, in a nutshell there. Okay, that's the end of the demo. Awesome, awesome. This is the coolest part, definitely, of our entire talk, right? To be able to see these things in action. And I'm sure our audience will really appreciate this as well. Um, this was really, really good. With this, we're reaching the end of our episode. Thank you so much for joining me today, Justin. Thank you, Shobit, for the opportunity. It's been great to talk to you. Awesome. Love the conversation. A um, lot of fun talking with you. Like I said, Justin, uh, with that, we're coming to the end of this episode. Uh, if you like this, join in for the next one. Uh, bye bye till next time. Mm -hmm.